So you're looking for a multivitamin and you're curious to know what exactly you should be looking for or maybe if even the current one that you're taking is total crap. Well, this video is going to give you everything you need to know so you can make a quick, easy, and effective decision on choosing the right formulation for you. Hi, I'm Jess. I'm a clinical nutritionist, and this channel is all about optimizing your diet and lifestyle for better mental health. But today we're going to be diving into a pretty foundational aspect of health, and that is choosing the right multivitamin and multimineral formula for you. Now, if you're wondering, do I really need to take a multivitamin, then check out this video here that's going to answer that question for you in much more detail because it really depends upon the circumstance. But assuming that you've already decided to take this path, let's get into it. The truth is, is that many multivitamins, not this one, this one is great, but a lot of them are total wastes of money. They essentially don't have very bioavailable or good forms of nutrients in them. So essentially you're just peeing out what you're taking. And also they could even give some people side effects depending upon how sensitive they are to some of these more poor, less available forms of the vitamins. So one of the main factors of today's video is gonna be taking a closer look at what specific forms we want for specific nutrients nutrients and ones that we want to avoid. But before we even get into that, we need to look at a few other things first. The first one being picking a formulation that is appropriate for your specific demographic. This really refers to your sex and your age because different demographics are gonna have different nutritional needs. So while there are some formulations that are like once a day, just unisex formulation, they're not gonna be as targeted as would really be appropriate. So a really good nutrient example of this is iron, for example, where obviously if you're a female of childbearing age and you're menstruating, you're gonna need a higher level of this because you're losing iron every month through your cycle. But if you are a postmenopausal woman, you don't need as much, or a male, for example. Multivitamins may additionally include some extra nutrients or antioxidant support, like one good example is males over 40 often have some good prostate support, antioxidants, as well as some cardiovascular care as well. And then even going back to the postmenopausal example, there might be a higher level of certain nutrients that you really need to maintain bone health, for example. A side note is that if you are a woman of childbearing age, I generally just recommend that you take a prenatal because I don't know about you, but most females that I know of that age want the best hair, skin, and nails that they can really get. So prenatals are gonna do that for you. You will need to take more a day just because you can only get so many nutrients in your body at once. But if you don't mind that, then I highly recommend it. The second factor that we need to discuss is where you should be getting your multivitamins or really your supplements from. For this purpose, the best place is really gonna be online because this is where the highest formulations, physician graded formulations are going to be. And it's actually really cool because these used to be brands and formulations that needed to be recommended by a healthcare provider or needed to be dispensed through like a supplement dispensary like full script but now a lot of these companies are selling them directly on their website or they also have um, Amazon stores as well which is super cool so the ranking for where to get your supplements from would be first online from either the company a physician you're working with or something even like Amazon Next on the level would be like a health food store. They're not gonna have the same brands as some of the top ones that I'm going to be personally recommending. However, it is gonna be a step up from the last on the list, which is getting your multivitamins from somewhere like a drugstore or Costco. So many people get their multivitamins or supplements from Costco. And while I'm not saying that you can't 
find one there. I mean, you know, things are always changing. You never know, but it's going to be like when you're going to a thrift store and you're hunting for that gold mine where I don't know about you, but I just don't have the time or energy for that. So if you want to be lined to a place where you're more likely to find all the things that we're going to go over in a bit, then that's what I would recommend. The third thing that we need to talk about is the encapsulation formula. So please, at all costs, avoid gummies. And this is not just because of the added sugar or other things in it like food dyes and, and coloring, but is also because they actually can't get as many nutrients into a gummy. So you're likely gonna be getting less um, vitamins and minerals. And they are additionally a form of a supplement that generally does not meet testing when, for example, a third party or a company is testing the nutrients to see if what people say is in the formula is actually in the formula. So maybe there's not actually the amount that they say is in there, whether that's because it was hard to get all of that into the gummy or in some circumstances have actually been shown to be more because they're spraying the outside of the gummies with these nutrients so that they can try and meet those needs. That's also going to lead to some nutrient nutritional stability factors as well. So I just like to avoid gummies at all costs for those reasons. I also generally recommend capsules over tablets. And this is really just because tablets can be very hard to digest and break down. So you're more likely to get readily absorbable nutrients from something like a capsule that you essentially open up and there's a powder in there. If you're getting value out of this video so far, please don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. It is the best way to support the content that I create. Now, the fourth factor is where we're actually gonna start looking at the back of this multivitamin and looking at specific nutrients to make sure that we're getting the forms that we want. We're not gonna cover every nutrient today. We're really gonna look at five specific ones that are gonna give us a really good indicator of how good of a quality this specific multivitamin is. So these nutrients are vitamin A, vitamin B12 cobalamin, vitamin B9 folate, and minerals, magnesium, and zinc. Let's start with talking about vitamin A. If you don't know this about vitamin A, there are actually two different forms. One of them is a retinol form, which is our most direct source of vitamin A. And another one is beta carotenes. And these are those like orange vegetables, like carrots that people are always referring to that are vitamin A. In reality, this is a preformed vitamin A, meaning that that actually needs to be converted into retinol in order for us to use it. Unfortunately, this conversion rate is pretty low and there are a lot of other genetic factors that play into this. So for some people, if they are not getting a direct source of retinol, they could end up with vitamin A deficiencies. When it comes to multivitamins, what a lot of companies will do is they actually use a combination of beta carotenes and a form of retinol. I'm not super concerned with the percentages of each, just more so concerned that there is some form of actual retinol. Sometimes companies just wanna use beta carotenes because maybe, you know, I don't know if it's cheaper or they don't wanna take accountability for potential like vitamin A toxicity, which is something that we do need to look out for. So it's a little bit of a safer bet, but not having enough vitamin A can be really problematic as well. So in order to ensure that you're getting some source of retinol, you wanna look for the following names. So you wanna make sure that there's some percentage of vitamin A coming from retinol palmitate, it might just say palmitate or retinol acetate. And you wanna avoid not a specific form of retinol, but just the ones that are 100% beta carotenes. The next two nutrients that we're gonna look at are specific B vitamins, folate and B12. You may have heard that these are specific B vitamins that need to be methylated or be in an active form. There are actually several different types of active forms, so we're just gonna make sure that they are in one of those as opposed to one that's inactive and may not provide us with the bioavailability that we need. 
So the best active forms for cobalamin are methylcobalamin, hydroxycobalamin, and adenosylcobalamin. What we want to avoid is cyanocobalamin or just cobalamin. With folate, there are several different names for active forms of folate. Some of these being methylfolate, methyl tetrahydrofolate, metafolin or L5-MTHF, and folinic acid. So folinic acid is not to be confused with folic acid, which is a form that we definitely actually want to avoid. Folinic acid is a natural source of folate found in foods, whereas that folic acid is the synthetic form. And the last two nutrients we're gonna look at are minerals, magnesium, and zinc. For both of these minerals, there are a lot of different forms that are totally appropriate. What we want to avoid in both of these is oxide. Oxide is very cheap, so for magnesium, for example, it's not gonna be super bioavailable, you won't really be getting much. And then for zinc, zinc actually tends to be a nutrient that can make people a little bit nauseated when they take it, and that's why when some people take something like a multivitamin, they feel a little bit of nausea. When it comes to zinc, while all forms can do this, generally the better, more bioavailable forms are less likely to lead to that nausea than the super cheap forms like oxide. So for both of these, there are a lot of different forms that are going to be okay or appropriate, but the ones that we are avoiding are oxide. And the fifth factor we want to look at when considering a multivitamin is just making sure that there's actually the appropriate amount of vitamins and minerals that we need. So while there is no specific gold standard for which vitamins and minerals are included in multivitamins, it can be pretty common in generic ones for me to see that they include most of the vitamins, water soluble and fat soluble. But when it comes to the minerals, they're really choosing the major minerals like calcium, uh, potassium and magnesium but then they just choose like one or two of the trace minerals like maybe iron and zinc but leave out some of the other trace minerals like selenium, molybdenum, copper, manganese. So it really just depends on your diet if you feel like you need those extra trace minerals. So it's totally up to you on whether you wanna go for something more basic or you wanna go for something really comprehensive to fill in those gaps. Now, we discussed sourcing a little earlier in the video. I'm gonna leave a link to not only some of my favorite multivitamin formulas below, but I'm gonna leave examples for each specific demographic so that you can kind of see a little bit more in detail about what I'm talking about. And if you wanna go find one on your own, you can get an idea of the specific scope of nutrients that I look for when I'm choosing a multivitamin for someone that I'm working with. And if you wanna make sure that you're getting all of the foundational nutrients that you need to support mental health that may or may not be in a multivitamin for several reasons, then check out this video here.